Hi everyone, my name is Vincent Go and uh, welcome to this uh, series of uh, tutorial about Substance Designer and how to make terrains inside Substance Designer, uh, Designer 5. Uh, so uh, maybe you have already seen the introduction video. This one uh, will be about the Mountain Maker that you can see here, which is a tool that allows you to basically paint a uh, mountain inside uh, inside Substance Designer, so you get some control. Um, this is the first part of the, the video, so you are at the right place if you are starting. Uh, if not, uh, I invite you to look at the playlist that will be created. Uh, I will add videos uh, over the time because I'm, I'm, I'm doing this tutorial here progressively, meaning that uh, I'm not done yet with what I'm doing. So, uh, what so we are going to start, uh, what in order not to cheat, we are going to make a new uh, I'm going to make a new graph, so we start from scratch. Um, so let's do. Uh, I will do it empty. You will understand why. Uh, and we call it uh, Mountain Maker tutorial like this. So first of all, what we will see is how to set up the scene, because what we are going to uh, work first is on on the on the terrain and of course on the height map and and we want to see this height map so first thing i will do is create two outputs which is one and another one and the first one will store an height map so here and the second one we store the normal map um, and what we have to do as well uh, is to set up the 3D view. So, as a material, you use tessellation, um, and as, uh, so, and you make sure, and that's it so far. So, why tessellation? Actually, because um, in case you don't know, tessellation is a material which is really handy because it allows you to see directly in. Uh, so uh, sorry, I have to put view output in 3D. So it allows you to see directly the the influence of the head map in uh, in the viewport. But as you can see, we see the influence, but there is not a lot of relief. Uh, so what you have to do to see it clearly, you have to add a normal map as well. So space bar n, and it doesn't fall. Even here, you don't see it really well because you have to boost. The, the normal map. So 20 generally you see it better. Uh, this is something really handy uh, that uh, I invite you to to use uh, anytime you want to work on normal maps, relief, height map, because uh, it really allows you to show directly the, the result of the of the normal map or the height map directly in the engine, uh, in the 3D viewport. This is extremely handy and um, uh, not only uh, for height map but also to test because sometimes you are going to play to make some test and you are just guessing what could be the result but with this you, you, you see directly the, the result and personally I like to focus first on the, on the relief that I want to do and sometimes I have some good surprise for example if I have uh, had another one that I make something like this that's exactly how I proceed I created a night map and just by playing and trying some stuff I, I got this that I really like and um, I, I wouldn't have thought about what it could be if, if I didn't put uh, plug it first so uh, first as I say I come here and what I have to do first give me a second not to be lost is uh, to build what we call a painter. So, in order to do the painter, what I wanted to do with my mountain maker is to be sure that where I paint the the crit, uh, I have the, uh, the the peaks of the mountain. It's, it it really corresponds. It's not just uh, displaying a mask that shows mountains without having control about where the peaks are. I, at least the main peak. So to do this, what I, I did first is to, I took uh, SVG map. I created one actually with new resource. Uh, 124 is fine, it can be smaller. For your graph, by the way, it's better uh, for this tutorial to take a quite high value, at least 2048 two, two, two is fine. Uh, I recommend that. So here I will put in grayscale because we don't need something else. And first what I wanted to do is a way to paint. So if I do that, for example, like that, 
you have nothing and I say hey if I paint something like that you you have something interesting but that's not what we want actually um, I invite you also to, to, to boost a bit the smoothness no it's fine here but what you can do is use the the distance node here sorry this is something over here yes. so what you can do is to use a distance node here and plug it directly inside your mask input and you get something already really interesting here what I do is shift when you want to move from one point to another now you do shift right and uh, drag and drop and it moves it and with that you already have a nice control and what you can do with that if you boost a bit as you see you can define the spread so that's will be the the control the controller for our uh, main m mountain actually so you see quite easy with the distance node you can define the influence so that's uh, that's something you can decide to expose I won't show the expose stuff uh, it won't be about exposing stuff but of course that's definitely something here that when you finish you want to expose next what I will do really fastly because uh, in order to, to work is to make a basic ground so in order to do that not for the mountain but for the rest actually um, do I do it now? No, I will do it at the end, it will be easy for you to see. So, what I was looking for actually is a, is a way to, to add some, uh, th some crits and uh, to do so, making some terrain wasn't that obvious at the beginning. So, what I decided to do is to, to look on the net and say, okay, how do they do uh, procedural terrain on, on, in, uh, in uh, stuff like one machine or or Bryce or stuff like that. So basically, it's uh, based basically on fractals and on uh, generally an image like this. So basically, what they take is they, they take uh, a shape, a polygon that they divide and they apply a noise on it and they redivide, redivide, etc., etc. You get the point. So I I I'll told myself, to, can we do the same uh, inside uh, inside substance and Obviously, obviously yes, we can. Oh, uh, just one thing that you see here during up here, as you see, there is lot, a lot of uh, artifacts here. We don't want that, of course. So it's because what you have to do is to go to your graph. You so you double click here, and you make sure that you set um, the graph to 16 bits. So if not, you will have a lot of artifacts. So you see, in 16 bit, it's good. So. We have, um, as we say, we built our shape. Um, I'm looking at the time as well to be sure that I'm not uh, too, too fast. No, it really should be fine. So we have the shape. Um, what we are going to do with this shape here, we are going to blur it a bit uh, with the, a blur node just to make sure it's not that straight in the border. So blur here once again like this and shift right click okay and I have something don't worry it won't be the mountain it's just the mask for the mountain so don't worry about that so then I have to, to, to find a shape that will be um, sharp enough uh, to, to to fit the to be to be the actually the peaks of the mountain so um, uh, Nicolas Vierman uh, uh, one of the guy who works at um, Allegorythmic told me, hey, try to invert the cell one. So that was actually a pretty good idea. So I took the cell one. And first, what you want to do with that is to change the distance to something really big, uh, like that. Okay, and you either can take a level and uh, invert in the level. Actually, that's uh, what I will do because first what I wanted to do is take the level and as you see it's not really uh, balanced so first I do an auto level here so I have something which is more contrasty and I invert the minimum output and the maximum outputs and we get this shape which are quite cool so once we have done this we are going to start organizing that a bit because if not as you will see the graph will be quite big so Mm. 
Okay, so we have that. This we one D the D shortcut just plug here. So this actually will be our main shape. What is that? We don't want that. So really important shape here because it will be used everywhere, and that's what I will use. And uh, uh, I will tile it so it will make like as if we subdivide it. Basically, you you will get the point. So the first step. I do is adding a blend node here. I plug this. So I blurred, I put a level, um, and I will plug this as well. And I will move it here. And I think for the first one, you want to put uh, uh, an overlay, should be fine. So Maybe this one needs to be uh, so. This you see is just a basic blend. Huh? <coughs> Sorry, I'm just looking for something just to be sure because here I have a level. Um, okay, it's actually a useless level. I don't know why it's here. So let's go back to the tutorial. So here I will just make sure I will put two instead of one. So basically, you have this kind of shape. Here I will spread it a bit more, and you have that, which is not really does that mean many things right now. But what we are going to do is to take this and actually use. We can use either a transform node or the safe transform. I will use the safe transform because it's more useful. Safe transform grayscale, and we are going to. Do it by uh, multiply it by two like that, and right now we are going to repeat the process. So first, as you see, I divide it by two. I will do Control D, and what I will do, I will plug. I will move that here. I will plug my previous input, and I, I will blend with this one. But what I want to do is something first, not to forget. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. It's easier. So let's do it again. So I take these two nodes and I duplicate it. Control D this way. Except that this one, I move this one. I multiply by two and I plug this one. And you will see the result. So it starts adding some noise. Don't worry, there is way too much noise right now, but we are going to fix it after. Oops, so I, I do some plays. Uh, I take them again. Control D. Same process. You you plug the next one, add a new place, and you reprocess. So if we look here, we have a lot of noise. We are going to do it another time. Okay. So what we are doing actually is repeating the same pattern again and again. And that's what fractal is basically. So it's repeating the same pattern. Here, of course, it doesn't work, as you see, except if you want like to to have a, an extraterrestrial alien uh, Earth. I don't know, but that's not what we want, obviously. But what is cool now is that I invite you to go to any level. So except maybe the first one, and to put the level to zero to get some control. So next one you see I select all the blend out and I put the opacity to zero so there is no influence. And right now I go back here. This one is one so maybe I will put it here. Sometimes I use either overlay or soft light or multiply. So this one, maybe the the blur here is a bit too strong. Maybe this. So here, what I do, I have my my opacity. The first one, generally, you, you can put it to one. It's quite fine. Then you go to the second one, and progressively you push it a bit, so you start to get some more. 
contrast then you go to the next one and you do the same and you see you start to get some some cracks like that and you go to the next one and you push a bit maybe you can try with multiply to see how it goes here it's really playing yeah you see multiply seems to give a bit more relief next one let's try soft light it's a bit softer now right now we're going to go back to the first one because obviously the it was a bit you, you can try so I would say we are going to tweak it in the next videos video sorry but here you already have a good idea on how it works so basically you I will just add another one just before to leave this first part and we say uh, what, what did you say okay this one sorry this one and we move that here again shift ok and this one is way too much of course and we do multiply, generate multiply is adding nice variations but it's way too strong ok so this was the first part uh, of the video um, I'm going to do another one soon to, to tweak a bit this value because as you see it's a bit too sharp and we see a bit too much the patterns but actually it gives you quite a, a good idea of I will diminish intensity what you can do as well just to finish is go to the to the main one and to make like if you paint you make you use a smaller value like 4 and what it will do it should give you a sharper mountain you see and here you can diminish also this value, maximum distance. Okay, it gives you something a bit better. So next video, so here you already have your painter. Uh, in the next video, we are going to to tweak it a bit, so we we get something a bit more realistic and closer to what we want.